What's going on, Average Joes? Today, I want to talk about Kindle Unlimited in 2023. So those of you who don't know, I love Kindle Unlimited. I've been uh, a subscriber for it for years now. I've had a Kindle for a very long time. I've been reading it from a Kindle for over 10 years now or so. This is probably my third one. So Kindle Unlimited, I have I've used a bunch and I think it is a fantastic deal and uh, I'm going to tell you more about Kindle Unlimited. I've done a couple of videos on Kindle Unlimited, which I'll, I'll link, but I wanna do an update video for Kindle Unlimited in 2023. So starting off, what is Kindle Unlimited? Kindle Unlimited is a subscription book service that Amazon has. And it is completely separate from Amazon Prime, so you don't get it with Amazon Prime. You don't need Amazon Prime to get it. So it is a monthly membership that is typically goes for $9.99, and it gives you access to unlimited amount of their library, which is like 200 to or 2 million plus books, and you get magazines and other things along with it. So you can read as many as uh, books as you want. That's why the name is Kindle Unlimited. You can check out a book, you can send it to your Kindle, you can read it for a little bit, you can not finish it, whatever, but just you can cycle through as many books as you want every month or continue as long as you have an active membership. They go automatically go to your Kindle if you have the same email that is from when you register your device, you put in your, your uh, Amazon email and then whenever you buy a book or check one out on Kindle Unlimited, it'll automatically go here as long as you're, you're hooked up to the internet and you just go read right away. Or if you have the Kindle app on any of your smart devices, uh, tablets, whatever it is, and then they also have audiobooks. So there are audiobooks a part of Kindle Unlimited. It's not quite 2 million titles, but they are they do have a decent amount of audiobooks and I have done Kindle Unlimited audiobooks before. When you do those and you add the audiobook, it goes to your Audible account because Amazon owns Audible. I was run by Audible, so when you hit add add whatever or add book, typically when you add the book, if it has the audiobook with it, it'll send the Kindle book to your Kindle and then the audiobook to your Audible at the same time. So you can co read and listen if you're one of those that like to follow and listen at the same time, which is kind of cool if, if you do that. I tried it once, didn't like it, but I have done the audiobook version of that, so uh, that is really good. The prices for Kindle Unlimited will, can also vary depending on your own account. So like when you get, at, so I think it's standard is $9.99, but you will, if you don't have a membership, like I, I've done this one every time I've signed up, I'll wait for them to come out with a deal. Sometimes they'll have a $1 for 30 days, $1 for 60 days I've seen, I did a $30 for six months in the past. I think I did that last year. I think I'm doing it currently right now. So you get three, six, 12 month deals. And that's when I wait to sign up. Whenever there's like these crazy deals of, okay, I don't want to pay 10 bucks a month for Kindle Unlimited. So I'm going to wait for one of these deals, whether three, six, 12 months and pay maybe half the price or even less, a third of the price and still have access to all the Kindle Unlimited titles. But either way, when you go to sign up for Kindle Unlimited, it, no matter what, I think there's a, there's like a 30 day trial or like a one day, one dollar 30 day trial or something like that. So you can at least get a feel for it. The variety in books is very good. And that's why I keep coming back to it because they keep getting more and more. And while there is a gap of a lot of mainstream titles and authors that aren't going to be on your Kindle Unlimited because uh, they just don't need to be. It's like they they have some really, really big name ones. Like I know Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Hunger Games, and some of those like really big book series are on Kindle Unlimited ones that have already blown up. But there's that big gap. And then there's like the self-pub and newer up and coming authors, which I mostly read because they can be really, really good. And, you know, it, it's, it's a great way for the authors to get their work out there because they get royalties and, and such on percentages of people who buy them or who, who check them out read their books, have, have much of their books are read. That's a whole thing I could probably do an entire video on. There are tons of fantastic up and coming authors and self-published authors that are putting their series on there. And I have a huge Kindle Unlimited list a, that, that I made, which I'll, I'll touch on later. But there's every single genre you could think of you know, that, you would, that you would be reading. Tons and tons of mysteries and thrillers. Those are huge for Kindle Unlimited. There's a lot of fantasy. There's some sci-fi. Um, I'm sure there's a bunch of romance and, and contemporary and stuff. I just don't, those aren't, I don't run in those circles. And to be honest, a lot of the self pub and Kindle Unlimited lists are almost longer in books I want to read more than the regular big, big time books because I know those are great and I know those are going to be there always. And Kindle Unlimited, like the, the inventory changes. So when the author signed their deals, they get the exclusive rights for however, however long, but then, you know, if you see a book on there that's on Kindle Unlimited, it, it might it might be gone in a couple of months, a couple of years. You know, it, it varies um, on and off. I know Blake Crouch had his uh, Tory Pines 
um, trilogy on there on Audible on, on audiobook too. I did the entire trilogy on audiobook, and then like I talked about it in one of my videos, and like two months later, it was gone. From like you could still read them, but the audiobook was gone from it. So it's not it's another reason to sign up because if you see one that you really want want to uh, read or listen to, then jump on it because it could be gone. So why you should try Kindle Unlimited? Well, because you can get you can read a ton of books in you know however however fast you read books and however however fast you can read books. You just whatever you paid, whether it's the uh, you paid for six months and you only pay thirty dollars for, it, then you have that time to just knock out as many books as you can. You can try. Um, this is a great time to even better for the uh, self published authors because you don't really know if they're your style or if they're even that good yet. So even if you read a third of the book and you decide to DNF it, it's like okay, why well, didn't I actually pay for this? So no harm, no done. And I've done that um, a, few, a couple of times where I just wasn't feeling a book or the author, and I just went on to to something else. So it great gives you a great chance to try new authors, try new genres, try new new things that sound new and exciting. And if you're not feeling it, you can just uh, back away and, and go on to something else. I've found some really really awesome series through this, like uh, Ash and Sand trilogy, which is one of my favorite trilogies now. And I'm reading another one that is uh, fantastic as well. You can try all these books out for relatively low low cost. Um, you might even be able to do one dollar for thirty days, and however many you know you can read five six books in a month, and then you've read five six books for one dollar. On average, each Kindle limited book is about five six dollars in that range. So even if you read two books per month, you've already gotten the value of it if you're paying nine ninety nine a month. But I never pay, almost never pay nine ninety nine a month. I always buy buying the long term deals get like half or third or sixty percent off. I mean, to me, Kindle in general is just the logical way to read because anytime I need another book, I'll just open this up, open up my app, add the book, and then there we go. It's 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 good to go. Uh, instead of like buying an actual physical book and getting to you and like this is much better on your eye. You can read in bed. There's like minimal backlighting and you can adjust the size and stuff. So overall like logically which I'm logically programmed, um, Kindle Kindle in general and Kindle Unlimited just makes so much sense. For those not to try, I mean I guess it would be the ones that Maybe you don't read that much. It might not be a value to you. Although even even so, I think even, even people that don't read very much, I think Kindle Limited can be okay for just trying a couple of things out here and there, like intermittent just for the deals. But overall, it's more for the avid readers. And so people that don't read as much, it wouldn't be as good of uh, a thing. Or people who um, you, you may, maybe you just want the mainstream ones, or if you're doing certain book, book clubs, um, you, you could you might not find the books that you're looking for on there. And so th that that's another reason. I guess another reason would be if, if you just want to hold a physical book, obviously you're not going to have a Kindle. You're not going to read for Kindle Unlimited. But there's not a whole lot of reasons why you should not do it if you are a Kindle reader. I mean, I guess if, when they're the parameters, if you're a Kindle reader and you read, you know, two, three books a month even, um, or, you know, we'll just say two books a month because that, that's how you exceed the value of it. I think it is definitely worth a try, and I cycle in and out of it. I'll buy a deal whether it's three month or six month, and I'll have it activated, and I'll cycle in my Kindle Unlimited books with other ones, and then I'll cancel it, and then I'll read all the other ones that I've uh, uh, accrued on my Kindle because I'm always looking at Kindle deals. I'm always buying ones for two, three, four dollars uh, off, you know, cheap, and that's how I do it. And then you know, three, six, eight months later, do it again, and then it's, it's just that sort of cycle. So I think it makes sense because I'll have a list of books that I want to read, and like. It's almost like an exclusive list. Like, okay, I can't read these until I get Kindle Unlimited again. And then it's like all hands on. These are the ones that I'm prioritizing. And that's kind of how it works. So another thing to consider is that when you do pay for something like that, you're more likely to actually read. It might, it might, it might spur you to read more if you're actually paying for this subscription. It's like, okay, well, I have to get my money's worth. So I need to, to read versus there's like this entire stack of books. Like I've bought these on sale on whatever. I've just acquired them, but I've already have them. I own them forever. There's no expiration on here. I think I've read one book and this or two books in this entire bookshelf this entire year because I have them. I'm I'm not going to get rid of them most likely, and so I'm just going with my my Kindle books because it's also easy. It's just so much easier to read on a Kindle versus physically, especially when you have a baby. I guess one of my first tips is create an Amazon wish list. I usually have mine linked below for Amazon for Kindle. And I, I actually have like multiple book wish lists on uh, on my Amazon account. I have one for physical, one for Kindle, and I have a Kindle Unlimited one. So whenever I discover new Kindle Unlimited books that I want to read, I add it to my wish list so that when I the deals do come along and I go, okay, time for Kindle Unlimited, and then I sign up and it's like, okay, all I'm going to see is, you know, you go on the Kindle Unlimited page on Amazon and all you see is, is the suggestions from Amazon. But if you go to your, your Kindle Unlimited list, 
and you go, oh, I forgot this one was on here. I forgot this one was on here. I know I was excited about this one. And you add those to your Kindle. And to me, that is that is fantastic. You can add up to, it used to be 10. Now it's up to 20 books, which is crazy to me because I may add like four or five at a time. You'd be like, okay, I know I want to read these. And then after I finish my next book, I'll see which one of those stick out to me. Maybe I'll add another one or something. But like 20 books is crazy. I remember when I first got it and it was set at 10, I would add 10 books, I would max it out and then I would read like one of them and then and then that was that. You can add all of those and and it's great for that reason in case you're, you're, you're a mood reader or um, say you're, you're traveling. And so this happens to us a lot. Whenever we travel, um, our Kindles, like I'll, it'll hook up to our home internet and we'll download all the books that we want. So that when we're out traveling, if we go through a book or two and we need the next one, it's already pre-downloaded, it's already pre-loaded because we've already stacked them up. So you can do that still with Kindle Unlimited. You don't, you, it's not just like checking out like a library. You just have it for as long as you want, for as long as you have your subscription. The next one, I, I, this is something that I really want to try. And I started talking to my wife about it and we might do it. And I found out that you can have up to six devices registered, uh, like Kindle devices registered. And yeah, so for Kindle Unlimited, you can have six, you can have it on six different devices. So that means you, if you own six Kindles or which I don't know why you'd own more than one, but say your family, my, my wife and I are, we have a family account so that anytime I buy a book, she can access the book. She, she can just manually add it to your Kindle, but you can't do that with Kindle Unlimited. However, if I were to register my email onto her Kindle, then it would basically be a mirror Kindle situation. And then she can access her own Kindle Unlimited books on the same membership. So if you and your spouse or your, you know, whether it's a kid or a, a sibling or something, you guys want to like, pair up on you know if, if you guys all if all go through one registered device as long as you're okay with having all of the same books basically mirrored and you just want to split a kindle unlimited membership or think of it that way do that we might do that because we already share all the same books anyway read a lot there's a lot of overlap with our books but kindles can hold so many books it doesn't really matter as long as you're like is on the same family plan or um don't mind having them on the same account then I think that's that's a that's a great to do because in the past we've she just signed up for her own Kindle Unlimited and it was still fine it was still a good deal but if we both have the same one then that's that's even better so I would try that out we might be trying that out soon because you know I'll, I'll just register my a a Amazon account for all, all of our Kindles and then and then we'll be good to go and just have as many many Kindle Unlimited books as we want especially now with the being able to check twenty out it's pretty awesome we already do that with Audible she's already signed into my Audible account. And every time I bought an, I buy an audiobook, she gets it because if not, I don't believe you could do that. It's not the same kind of family sharing with Audible. So, like I said, there's there's all, all those big name books. They also have Darker Shade of Magic. I saw. I just started reading uh, Fred the Vampire, which is hilarious, and then I Palace Cleanser. Um, I had recently done a lit RPG video. There's one on there that was recommended that um, I have had on my list called Primal Hunter. That one is entirely on Kindle Unlimited, not the audiobook. I mostly do audiobooks for lit RPG, but the Primal Hunter is on there if you want to lit RPG, uh, because that's that's getting a lot of popularity now, and I'm sure there's some other ones. Um, I just prefer to listen to them because they're, those books are pretty long. But those are my reasons why, and a little bit of an update on Kindle Unlimited. I think it is a fantastic value, think fantastic thing to try. Like I said, if you even read two books a month, then go and add it, try it out, check out my Kindle Unlimited saved list. It's mostly fantasy. There's some sci-fi on there, a little bit of I think a couple of thrillers, mystery as well because I like to have a, a wide variety, but I would recommend to make your list. I, I start adding books to your list, check out videos. And then once you have a solid list and, and excited for a good chunk of books, sign up for the, for it. You, you'll probably be presented with uh, different kinds of deals. If you go to Kindle Unlimited for, for those different ones, or just wait for certain times a year. And it'll definitely be a great, uh, great value. So let me know what you think about Kindle Unlimited. Do you, have, have you, do you subscribe to Kindle Unlimited? How do you like it? Uh, how long have you done it? You know, all of those things. Or if you have any if you have any specific questions about Kindle Unlimited in general, then let me know in the comments and we'll chat more there.